And now would you join with me in confession, knowing that as we come to God, we confess what is on our lips and on our hearts, and God hears us and offers us comfort and strength. Would you join me in confession? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Amen. We use this psalm, this portion of Psalm 51, as uh, we began Lent with our Ash Wednesday service. Truly, this psalm is one that speaks of confessing to God, asking for a pure heart, and knowing that God indeed purifies us and offers us a chance to live as disciples of Jesus Christ each and every day. Thanks be to God. I uh, requested congregation members to send in jokes to me, a few of which I will share with you now as we uh, enjoy the joy of the Lord together. A mother went to wake her son for church one Sunday morning. When she knocked on the door, he said, I'm not going. Why not? asked his mother. I'll give you two good reasons, he said. One, they don't like me. Two, I don't like them. His mother replied, I'll give you two good reasons why you will go to church. One, you're 47 years old. Two, you're the pastor. And then a joke that Lisa Adderholt said. A local pastor joined a community service club, and the members thought they would have some fun, some fun with him to welcome him. Under his name, on his name badge, they printed hog collar as his occupation. Everyone made a vague fanfare as the badge was presented. The pastor read hog collar and then responded saying, I usually am called shepherd of the sheep, but perhaps you know your community better than I do. A pastor decided to visit his church members one Saturday at a particular house. It was clear someone was home, yet no one would come to the door. So after knocking a few times, the pastor took out his card and wrote on the back, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with them. The next day in worship, the same card showed up in the collection plate. Below the pastor's message was another scripture passage, Genesis 3.10. I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And then this contribution from Delia Edling. A minister told his congregation, Next week, I plan to preach about the sin of lying. To help you understand my sermon, I want you all to read Mark chapter 17. The following Sunday, as the pastor prepared to deliver his sermon, he asked for a show of hands as to how many had read Mark chapter 17. Every hand went up. The minister smiled and said, the Gospel of Mark has only 16 chapters. I will now proceed with my sermon online. And here's the only joke I will tell about a priest, a rabbi, and a pastor. A priest, a rabbi, and a pastor walked into a bar. It hurt. And this contribution from Jen Hosler sharing some of the joy of the Lord from daily events. How do you make a tissue dance? Put a little boogie in it. We 
we know that Jesus was fully divine yet also fully human. And so we connect with Jesus by thinking about him as if he is like us. And there are some compelling reasons for us to do so. For example, we can certainly think that Jesus was Italian. He had wine with his meals, he used olive oil, and he talked with his hands. But we can also think that Jesus was black. He loved the gospel, he called everyone brother, and he couldn't get a fair trial. We might argue that Jesus was Irish. He was always telling stories, he loved green pastures, and he never got married. And then, of course, it's pretty obvious Jesus was a free spirit. He walked around barefooted, he never cut his hair, and he started a new religion. But we could also think that Jesus was a woman. After all, he kept trying to get a message across to a bunch of guys who just didn't understand. He fed a crowd at a moment's notice when there was no food. And even after he died, he had to get up and go back to work. Because there's always work for a woman to do. And then Horace Gump enters heaven. He stood in front of St. Peter at the pearly gates, and St. Peter said, Welcome, Forrest. We've heard a lot about you. We know you're a good person, but there is a test you must take in order to get into heaven. Okay, said Forrest. I hope it's not too hard. I've already been through tests. My mama used to say, life is like a final exam. It's hard. Yes, Forrest, St. Peter replied. This test has only three questions. First, which two days of the week begin with the letter T? Second, how many seconds are in a year? And third, what is God's first name? Well, said Forrest, the first question is easy. Which two days of the week begin with the letter T? Today and tomorrow. St. Peter was stunned um, and stuttered. Well, that wasn't the answer I was looking for, but you have a point. I'll give you credit for that answer. The next question, said Forrest, how many seconds in a year? Twelve, of course. Twelve, said St. Peter, completely confused. Yes, sir. January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd. All right, St. Peter interrupted. I see what you mean. I'll give you credit for that one, too. And the third question, said Forrest, is easy. God's first name is Andy. Andy, said St. Peter. How did you come up with Andy? I learned in church, said Forrest. We used to sing. Andy walks with me. Andy talks with me. Andy tells me I am his own. St. Peter opened the gate to heaven and said, Run, Forrest, run. And how exactly does one get into heaven? A man died and met St. Peter at the pearly gates. Peter said, Here's how it works. You need 100 points to get into heaven. You tell me all the good things you've done that all total up to a certain number of points. If your total is 100, you can enter. Well, said the man, I was happily married to the same woman for 52 years. I never even looked at another woman. I loved her dearly. That's great, said St. Peter. That will be two points. Oh, said the man, this is going to be harder than I thought. Well, I attended church regularly. I volunteered my time, and I tithe faithfully. Wonderful, said St. Peter. That's worth another point. One point, said the man. Wow. Um, okay, I was involved with the prison ministry for 25 years. I went to the prison at least monthly and shared Jesus with the inmates. Amazing, said St. Peter. That's another two points. Only two points, said the man. At this rate, it will only be by the grace of God that I'll ever get into heaven. Amen, said St. Peter. That's 100 points. Come on in. The joy of the Lord is truly our strength. Let us continue to make a joyful noise to the Lord in all that we 
do. We're so grateful to all of you who continue to send in your offerings. The work of the church is going on, and we're sure that you are continuing that work in your homes as well. As you do your best to be safe, uh, to keep little contact with others, and yet pick up the phone and call your neighbor to make sure they're okay. Or check in on the elderly people you know who might need someone to stop at the store for them. Or the many other ways you may be helping by sewing face masks and by offering donations to charities so that they can continue the important work of helping people in crisis. And then, of course, there's Giving Blood, that donation of life which is so urgently needed at this time when many are seriously ill. Thank you for all that you do to share the love of God with God's people. Again, if you are able, please send your offering to the church. Would you join with me in prayer? Life-giving God, we thank you for renewing the joy you have given us in Christ. This we pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now Chris will lead us in singing, God bless you, Mary Sinner. <laughs> 